Before I start, just wanted to let you know that you can download this image. It's in the information box below, along with all the other products that I used in this video. Hi, it's Dia. Today, we are going to color the calling bird. And I'm gonna use this 72 set of Norberg and Linden colored pencils. The first thing that I did was outline the eye because I don't know if you know this, I didn't either. Uh, we know this bird as a calling bird. And I found out a calling bird is basically an Americanized version or a way to say a collie bird. I made, I put a little, to interrupt myself, I put a little yellow and a little bit of orange on the beak because as I'm gonna tell you here, the entire bird would be black and it would look a little bit maybe boring. So a collie bird is, is well, collie is a dialect word that means black. And it probably refers to the European blackbird uh, and perhaps even a raisin. <laughs> raisin? Raven. So, <laughs> so who knew that all the kids that were saying it wrong when we were kids were actually right? Um, some say the four calling birds are the evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Charles Schultz from the Peanuts fame used Linus to explain that a calling bird is a kind of partridge. Uh, I don't remember that from that from that Peanuts episode, but I love Charles Schultz and I love the Peanuts. So whatever he says is true goes for me right here. It has morphed. And it went from collie bird to calling bird here in America anyway, back to collie bird. And by the way, there is no calling bird ornithologically. There's no, there's no bird listed as a calling bird. So what I did here was take the black from this set. And you know, after I used that um, Pablo set yesterday, I was almost a little punchy from the from the black because it was not it was not that easy to use. It was it was almost eternally like a dark charcoal, no matter how many times I went over it. Maybe in another video I will go over that goose's head with another black black to see if it actually makes it any better. So what I did here was go over the areas that were gonna be darker or in shadow first. I pushed a little bit harder, but I didn't wanna burnish, and I did want some of the lighter colors. <laughs> I say lighter color, it's all the same black, but you can make it in different, in different intensities. So I colored over everything because even some of the reflections on a blackbird aren't gonna be pure white. They might look gray. They might look like muted charcoal. So in certain areas, I just kept it lighter. Now the areas on his wings that I made dark, I made that darker because in my head, there would be a light source coming through those open wings. And the dark part, well, let me rewind. All of the feathers on that bird would be pitch black, but if there's a light source behind, the light would come through the feathers that were opened up, like in the bottom of the wings. Now the top part of the wings, that actually has muscle and mass behind it, so the feathers would remain um, pitch black, looking very, very dark. In other words, the feathers at the bottom aren't actually lighter. 
It's just that the sun or the light source is coming through the back and they appear lighter. Now I'm making the feathers here. It almost looks like it looks like two-toned. And yes, the bird is stylized. It's not it's not perfect like you would see in an Audubon book, but certain feathers would be crisscrossing over each other meaning they would sit on top of one another. Um, they wouldn't be perfectly spread out like, like fingers on a, on a hand. So certain areas would be darker because just like where there's muscle and part of the bird's body on the wing, the feather that was on top of another feather would not really cast a shadow, but it would allow less light to come through. So it would appear darker, like I just colored on those wings. I don't know if you noticed, but I goofed on the beak, and I will fix that later. I found this to be interesting. First of all, coloring in one. Oh, let me just interrupt myself. I made two little feathers on the tip of each wing because I felt like Nothing on the bird would be perfect, although their feathers do lay nicely on top of one another when they're flying. They do ruffle up, and it, it, he, he was looking a little too perfect for me, so I, I, I added those two feathers. And then I kind of regretted it because it looked a little messy, and I'm not quite sure. I, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to erase it, but I did end up leaving it. And then... I just kind of went back and forth, um, kind of forming him. The darker areas would be where the most shadow would be, so underneath his belly. Now here I took the white, and I was going to blend those areas where the light was shining through. Because later on, well, I had an idea in my head that I would put a little bit of feathery detail in there. I, I don't know if I loved it or I didn't, but I did it and it was, it was what it was. So I left it. I, I was adding like a little bit of a glossy look. Feathers on some birds, especially these blackbirds, can be very shiny and they do, I don't know if you would say cast reflections, but they they give off reflections. So I didn't want to put the white over everything because I didn't want to mute the black too much. I really liked doing this in just one color, except for his beak. It was an interesting challenge, and I really, I had a lot of fun doing this. I also like drawing only in charcoal or in uh, regular pencil, graphite pencil. I love getting all the different textures. And yes, pencils do come in different, not strengths, what's the word? They come in different soft, hardnesses, softnesses and hardnesses, I guess you would say. Um, and that's it for now. And I will go back to him in a couple minutes. I wanted to start doing some of the background so I just added some wheat color to the pears. The pears were really fun to do. I happen to love pears. I have several pictures of pears in my home that I painted and they're huge. I don't, I don't know why I like, I put pears in my house versus apples, but there's, there, there's something elegant about them. They're pretty. Okay, now that is one sort of step darker, and I went around the thin part of the pear with that slightly darker, not quite brown, but darker wheat color, just to give an indication that that's where the pear was sort of in a little bit of a shadow. Now, I was doing some leaves here and the berries. I picked two colors for the berries, a, a red and a more wine color. And some of the berries are just floating in the air. 
And stylistically, I thought that would look really pretty because of the red against the green leaves. Now, when I first started using the leaves, I kind of did a, a muted, like a gray teal color. And then I went in a couple times, because I, I don't know what I'm doing at first. I don't know what colors are gonna look nice next to what. And uh, I did goof a couple times and then just sort of went over and found my footing. Oh, now I'm just taking a regular gray. This is the lightest gray in that set and filled in some of the bark. I don't like to make the trees completely brown. I know that since I was a kid, I would just draw the bark of trees or the, the, tr the trunk of a tree brown. Now I like to do it gray. Oop, and here's a slightly darker color. It gives the pear uh, an indication of more shape. Oh, now I took the black and I just made some horizontal lines to indicate where the feathers were, I don't wanna say separating, but just, just the indications of the feathers. Oh, I'm just going in with the rest of the tree now. This one was pretty, pretty fast just because it was mostly black. And basic leaves, I didn't, I didn't want to do anything fancy. I could have gone in with um, different color greens, but I thought the picture is so busy as it is, I just kind of wanted to leave it. So that's it for now. Is this where I'm, uh, okay, you can see on his beak, I took that, I took that um, Sakura eraser and I took off that little black mark that I goofed and then I tried to fix and then I made it worse. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining me on the Collie Bird Day. And uh, what do we have tomorrow? I think we have four Collie Bird, we have a French hen tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. And I'm having a lot of fun with this so far. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you wanna see after the Christmas season's over. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this, maybe you'll give me a thumbs up or, or is it a like here? I don't remember. A like, a thumbs up, a share, or a follow. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you're all well and I will see you soon. Thank you, bye.